Okay, Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi Isnin kepada semua viewers hashtag Inisiator saya BTS. So, kembali lagi ke uh, FB Live uh, hashtag Inisiator saya. Tapi sebelum tu, di kesempatan ini saya nak mengajak semula untuk kita sama-sama berdoa supaya mereka yang terkesan dengan musibah banjir baru-baru ni dipermudahkan urusan mereka dan semoga diberi kekuatan. So, uh, this Uh, apa, a lot of donation drive going on so pastikan uh, korang dapat sumber yang betul dan beri sumbangan melalui sumbangan yang betul Okay, okay so hari ni kita ada dua lagi tetamu untuk hashtag ini cerita saya BTS Saya cerita sikit uh, latar belakang hashtag ini cerita saya behind the scene ni So uh, FB Life ni merupakan koleksi kisah reality, uh, aspirasi dan inspirasi warga Ehsan Peraju sendiri So uh, Setakat ini kita dah melahirkan lebih 40,000 penerima faedah sejak tahun 2012 tahun kita beroperasi So insyaAllah tahun depan 2022 kita akan menyambut ulang tahun yang ke-10 So towards uh, celebrating our 10th anniversary tu kita nak berkongsilah kisah-kisah uh, di sebalik tabir ya sang peraju macam mana kita dah tolong orang department mana yang terlibat siapa yang terlibat semua tu kita bercerita uh, melalui personal view masing-masing So hari ni kita ada lagi dua tetamu untuk episod 11 uh, Boleh kenalkan diri, department mana dan dah berapa lama kerja dekat Yayasan Penyeraju, silakan um, Okay, hi Assalamualaikum semua uh, Saya Hanim uh, dari Finance Department um, Actually uh, I buat uh, recovery iaitu under unit pembayaran balik um, I dah join uh, Yayasan Peneraju since April 2019 and until today I think about 2 years and 7 months dah Okay, Hanim from Finance specifically recovery Okay, uh, lagi seorang sila kenalkan diri Hi, I'm Shazana, boleh panggil Shaz uh, I'm from uh, bahagian strategi dan perhubungan Uh, specifically perhubungan strategik ataupun strategi engagement uh, Join yang saya pernah ju bulan April juga tapi dua tahun lagi awal daripada Hanim pada tahun 2017 So 18, 19, 20, 21 tahun depan cukup lah juga dalam lima tahun which is quite quite some time mm -hmm. and sepanjang durasi bersama yang saya pernah ju um, Syaz memang bertukar-tukar mm -hmm. uh, posisi dalam Department yang sama iaitu strategi and engagement Okay alright thank you Shaz Okay uh, Shaz uh, and Hanim maybe can share a bit about your uh, function dekat ISM Praju your job role and macam mana you punya uh, job role tu uh, contribute to ISM Praju punya mandate ataupun whole operations Maybe Hanim boleh start dulu Oh okay Um, basically main role tu macam tadi saya cakap lah unit pembayaran balik so memang nampak kat situ jelas lah uh, memang untuk bahagian pembayaran balik which is uh, untuk collect uh, education loan from our scholars so memang untuk uh, apa my main role ialah untuk me me mengutip kesemua lah kalau boleh semua lah nak kutip tapi <laughs> tak tahu lah kan harap-harap dapat lah semua uh, Um, so maksudnya kita kena, uh, my main task is to collect um, um, education loan from our scholars lah basically itu main task Other task ialah kita uh, work with finance untuk other reportings lah audit, um, uh, monthly reporting, receivables semualah um, uh, Untuk bahagian uh, yang recovery ni um, basically kita akan collect um, um, daripada kategori ada ada specific kategori je as basically ada tiga uh, kategori lah daripada uh, scholars yang kita kutip which is um, terminated scholars, withdrawal and completed scholars. Completed ni pula um, bukan semua yang kita collect. Um, some of them uh, ada yang being exempted and some of them bayar partial payment je tengok uh, apa uh, kriteria diorang and syarat-syarat yang diorang Uh, dah uh, sign dalam scholars agreement earlier lah uh, basically itulah main role kita and uh, contribution uh, to the Yayasan Penaraju basically uh, apa masa you collect tu you actually uh, 
uh, apa giving back something uh, to other people lah bila you collect uh, duit uh, um, daripada pelajar yang lama uh, and then you boleh lah um, bagi kepada pelajar yang baru pula in future uh, jadi oh. hmm, dia macam itulah sebenarnya bila sebab kita collect tu uh, government money untuk development program jadi kita memang uh, salurkan balik kepada development program untuk pelajar-pelajar yang baru pula So on top of the grant yang kita dapat from government every year tu ni macam uh, top up jugalah for our new programs eh? um, <coughs> By right macam tu lah uh, top up untuk program-program pro, uh, lain uh, jugalah sebenarnya I see. Uh, Hanif uh, dalam recovery tu berapa ramai team ke you seorang nak Oh ayah ada lagi seorang kelik um, uh, untuk uh, buat recovery juga so kita actually dua orang lah dalam recovery Okay hmm. You dah berapa lama eh Hanem dalam finance 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 ni ni finance deal ni so uh, dan hmm. before tu nak you pernah ke buat recovery Um, sebenarnya um, I dah lama kerja dengan finance since I graduated memang dah Memang dah buat auditing, memang dah um, finance even before yang I kerja, before I masuk ya Sapan Raja pun I dah 10 years experience dengan one of the GLC juga. Um, cumanya um, I kat sana I serve um, entrepreneurs. So di sini di Yayasan Sapan Raja kita serve uh, Bumi, Bumi Putra Scholar yang pemegang uh, amanah di sini kan. Uh, jadi um, situation tu lainlah uh, dekat dekat sana kita uh, experience wise um, untuk recovery is the first time lah uh, dekat sini dekat area uh, recovery uh, dekat yang sampai raju ni experience wise memang i i i rasa memang baru lah kan yang kata tadi but skill wise so i rasa okay je kan mm, boleh lah uh, dia <laughs> kita senang adapt sebab dia still dalam finance ah uh. mm. okay thank you anem Uh, Shaz, maybe you can explain sikit about your job role dekat Yayasan Peneraju and how your function to contribute to Yayasan Peneraju punya mandate. Um, so basically for me, I I work with strategy engagement. Kita punya function uh, predominantly adalah stakeholder relations lah. Kita ada banyak uh, external parties that we work with. Contoh antaranya yang paling penting ialah kita punya pledges ataupun penyumbang dana lah yang mana dia memberi sumbangan dana untuk kita menjalankan program-program Yayasan Peneraju untuk kita melahirkan satu public-private partnership because it's not all the time that ia merupakan satu orang kata tanggungjawab khusus kepada kerajaan sahaja tapi kita perlu juga bantuan daripada industri, GLC, uh, syarikat-syarikat swasta dan juga individu-individu yang berkemampuan untuk sama-sama menggembling tenaga dalam kita melahirkan tenaga kerja mahir buat negara yang tercinta. Yeah. So um, but besides that, yeah, we also obviously when we work with pledges, kita ada banyak uh, preparation lah, kita ada banyak reports, kita ada banyak presentation, proposals that we have to prepare and submit in order for us to uh, deliver apa yang kita promise to our pledges. At the same time, we have a lot of different events that we have to perhaps organize uh, on behalf of Yayasan Peneraju untuk the pledges. You know, sometimes mungkin lepas they have already menyumbangkan sejumlah dana, they are interested to get to know uh, penerima faedah yang telah benefit daripada sumbangan dana. They want to know their achievements, their progress. So, kita di strategic engagement bertindak sebagai the mediative factor lah because uh, we also manage the external party and we also work with our internal colleagues from our PSDM team. Um, apart from that, I also uh, am part of the secretariat atau mm -hmm. Yasa Peranjo, the dual advisory panel. So secretariat first untuk industry advisory council, ahli lembaga penasihat industri. Satu lagi kita ada youth advisory icon. So perbezaannya ialah uh, Industry Advisory Council ni terdiri daripada individu-individu yang mempunyai very vast experience in their own respective industries. Antaranya kita ada uh, yang berbahagi Datuk Yasmin Mahmud, kita ada yang berbahagi Datuk Nora Mana. In fact, kalau you guys are familiar dengan Pak Cik Shell, Encik Syaran Huzani Hussein is also one of our Industry Advisory Council members and we have plenty more. We have about nine of them. Uh, working together with us memberikan input-input yang kita perlukan 
from the different industries in order to ensure that program-program Yayasan Peneraju ni kita jalankan untuk memenuhi keperluan industri dan juga keperluan negara pada masa ini dan juga masa hadapan because we want to work one step further lah, one step ahead of of what is needed at the point of time. Untuk youth advisory icon pula dia punya function ialah untuk memberi kita lebih kurang juga cuma input-input yang lebih berfokuskan kepada keperluan dan kehendak uh, belia Malaysia. Um, kita ada our alumni dalam kita punya youth advisory icon Kita ada wakil daripada majlis belia Malaysia Kita ada aktivis-aktivis Kita ada pelbagai um, orang kata wakil daripada pelbagai golongan lah Untuk membantu Yayasan Peneraju dalam memastikan apa yang kita buat ni Dia dapat memenuhi keperluan industri satu Bagi juga keperluan target market kita iaitu para penerima faedah Daripada segenap Orang kata tusuk uh, masyarakat daripada um, urban poor tu yang berada di kampung, dari yang berada, berada di Senanjung, juga yang berada di Sabah dan Sarawak. Uh, kita nak make sure kita punya program tu mempunyai keberhasilan yang tinggi. So I think okay. that that's generally what I do. But of course, I I always see myself as the jack of all trades lah. There's so many different things that uh, we do in strategy engagement in order for us to, you know, make programs happen, uh, make a pledge happen. <laughs> uh, we also work with um, uh, senior government officials uh, in certain capacity with events or uh, launching or delivering a mandate. And personally, I also work with the CEO office in uh, assisting them with any CSR activities. So, in a way, I'm also macam amphibia lah. Kat department ni ada sikit, department ni pun ada sikit. Macam tu. Okay, so lembaga per penasihat industri tu basically all the programs that were designed and uh, uh, yang akan kita design tu based on their opinion ke, Shaz? Betul, macam biasanya actually the process will come from uh, input daripada kita punya bahagian perancangan strategik. Dia mm -hmm. akan prepare all the necessary information, dia akan do the groundwork, the research, the desktop research and then kita akan sampaikan input yang kita telah perolehi ni untuk orang kata uh, pendapat daripada lembaga penasihat industri tadi. You know sometimes certain programs um, we rasa it's really good but maybe sebenarnya it's already saturated ataupun mm -hmm. certain programs kita rasa we want to venture into it but then from input of industry actually industry tak ready lagi untuk something like this so even if kita menjalankan program tu kita punya impact tu is not going to be uh, far reaching contohnya so that's why input input mereka ni valuable uh, because they are the masters of and captains of their own industry and and then sometimes ada industri baru contohnya Yasa Penaju like the venture into technology but kita tak tahu kita nak mula di mana so that's when we get input daripada our IAC lah untuk memberi nasihat pandangan okay which path should we you know go on to should we focus tapi of course um, all the input yang diberikan ni kita tak take it bulat-bulat kita sentiasa orang kata perhalusi kita buat research kita kita ensure that you know we are able to deliver because at the end of the day our mandate is also to ensure that we deliver it to the right target so it's about um, being able to receive input from party A, party B and then kita kena make sure lah kita somewhere in the middle tu kita dapat jumpa the right orang kata recipe for success Betul. Tak adalah orang kata apa buat program short sendiri kan? Betul, betul. It's, it's very important. And I thought one more thing yang asal peneraju, kita tak tend to buat um, output with programs. So kita nak program kita tu ada impact. And we sometimes also tend to, you know, calculate kita punya key deliverables kan. So uh, it's a bit more complicated lah to ensure that all aspect of kita punya uh, mandate tu is covered when we talk about the success of a program. It's not just, oh, kita dah melatih uh, X number of packs. Kita nak juga tahu X number of packs ni uh, berapa orang yang akhirnya dapat pekerjaan and hmm. berapa orang yang uh, memperolehi peratusan kenaikan gaji uh, hmm. and mungkin along the years uh, berapa orang antara mereka yang you know have have moved into a different orang kata pay grade atau have become specialist in that particular area contohnya hmm. so, so basically memang kita kita jaga from A to Z lah from selection, training and then habis tu monitoring pula kan 
Betul, betul. I agree. So that's why uh, strategic engagement masuk kita, of course this kind of work kan kita tak boleh nak buat bersendirian. Kita nak yeah. nak buat in silo macam Hanin cakap dengan tadi. So kita nak bekerja sama dengan industri lah. So when we have a certain program, kalau kita nak ensure kita punya faedah ni uh, dapat penempatan pekerjaan then we have to talk to the industry to ensure that the skill sets yang kita berikan ni is what they need and subsequently dia boleh hire this particular penerima faedah. So kita dapat change the lives lah of the penerima faedah because kalau kita train and then there's nothing beyond that um, you know for for certain areas that's fine. Mungkin uh, finance for example kan you have the capacity to go out there and look for opportunities yourself but for our zero to hero program sometimes maybe they need a little bit of hand holding and that's where I think um, we step in lah to assist. Mm. All right. Thank you, Shaz. Okay, um, I'm circling back to Hanim. Hanim, how has the experience in Yasan Praju been for you? Apa you punya uh, memorable experience yang you nak share? Tak kisahlah dengan scholars ke, dekat Yasan Peneraju ke, maybe you want to share, Hanim? Um, okay, um, uh, macam tadi I cakap tu, um, I join uh, Yasan Peneraju memang I first time buat recovery, I tak pernah buat dekat uh, recovery dekat company lain pun. So, you need sometimes to learn. Walaupun you dah lah banyak experience dengan finance tapi uh, untuk buat recovery ni is actually um, uh, something else lah sebab you actually deal dengan um, other people public uh, which is our scholars lah. So, masa I mula-mula join tu, I macam uh, rasa kena bela- sebab dia kena belajar daripada zero sampai lah you excel buat recovery kan and then I ada lah bertanya macam I tanya lah I punya boss, uh, I punya recent boss tu I tanya so how long it will take to orang yang uh, to these people yang with no experience in recovery to learn this this uh, apa how fast so dia kata uh, depends so kalau depends so Um, I have set my target lah. So within uh, uh, three to four months, I dah kena excel lah semua ni. So that is part of the experience yang 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 memang the journey in Yasa Peneraju yang yang masa you start you start kerja, yang you tak boleh nak yang tak boleh nak lupa lah. Sebab you nak kena, bila you nak kena belajar tu, you nak kena drill daripada awal. Uh, and then you kena communicate dengan all the all the people, all the unit. Uh, Um, apa daripada atas sampailah ke bawah and then you kena uh, close uh, kerja dengan um, operation which is uh, kita punya PSDM punya team sebab nak tahu daripada awal sampailah ke apa akhir uh, apa scholars dapat uh, scholarship kan and then hmm. other than that uh, you also deal dengan um, all these people yang Um, macam scholars yang macam-macam situation even though diorang dah habis belajar pun tapi diorang still akan ada a few-few um, issue, a few-few situation which yang ada yang sebenarnya lepas dah kerja pun uh, lepas dah habis belajar pun still um, unemployed ada yang ada yang dah kerja tapi terlalu banyak commitment so these are the people yang you kena manage uh, you kena try to negotiate dengan diorang um, um, apa try to convince diorang yang um, you you can you can uh, pay us back tapi kita boleh discuss macam mana kita nak buat dengan dengan situation you apa yang kita dah perlu buat kalau you ada medical issue um, you macam apa yang perlu kita buat so um, these are the things yang you uh, yang apa yang I experience the most lah So you akan rasa happy bila you dapat tolong um, scholars ni daripada dia being unresponsive bila kita kita tak boleh contact dia and then suddenly kita dapat get in touch dengan dia and bila kita dah discuss negotiate punya uh, habis-habisan kita negotiate dengan orang and then dia actually the next month tu dia start to pay us sampai lah sekarang so um, that is part of the apa ni and other than that daripada um, berapa persen je yang nak bayar and now kita dah reach at least um, up to 45 persen dah orang yang bayar daripada um, apa versus kita punya uh, notis pembayaran balik yang kita keluarkan so that is that is one of the improvement lah ada tak Hanim uh, scholars yang you memang tak dapat contact langsung so bila tak dapat contact tu apa you buat 
um, ada je um, scholars yang kita tak dapat contact langsung sebab bila kita hantar email dia akan bounce back lah email tu that hmm. one that is one of the part yang kita boleh trigger lah so um, apa yang kita buat we will try to call them and then some of them ialah uh, bila dah unresponsive tu um, adalah yang kadang-kadang lupa ada 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 oh, betul ke kita ada apa ada um, dapat scholarship daripada Sapran Raju ya Allah kan pastu macam okeylah tak apa tak apa uh, yang uh, nanti kita try to recall so kita bila kita try to recall barulah uh, oh ya 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 okey then then lepas tu baru kita negotiate lagi lah so katakanlah kalau kita tak boleh contact langsung kita memang akan tengok kepada uh, uh, kita punya agreement lah siapa yang ja, ya, siapa yang sign, siapa yang jadi penjamin dia orang mostly uh, ibu bapa, wife, spouse ke apa kan so kita akan contact um, orang-orang itulah so normally um, bila kita dah contact um, penjamin-penjamin yang lain ataupun ibu bapa dia orang ke and then normally scholars tu akan respond balik lah um, tak adalah yang macam Um, tak boleh contact langsung unless unless um, unless memang uh, scholars tu tak notify kita lah kalau ada um, apa macam ada kematian ke ada apa ke ada tak bagi tahu dan yang tu memang betul-betul kita tak tahu lah. Alright, thank you Hanim. Uh, itulah antara cerita di sebalik tabir finance bahagian specifically bahagian recovery ya. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, any uh, special uh, experience atau memorable experience yang you want to share with the viewers sepanjang you kerja dekat SM Peneraju? Siapa? Hanim ke I? Ya, yeah, uh, you. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, for me, mungkin mungkin uh, tak ramai yang tahu this is not my first job. So this is not the first government agency that I've worked with. Mm-hmm. Uh, my biggest passion is nation building. So sebenarnya before I joined Yasam Peneraju, I was an English teacher for over six years. Um, so, you know, I have been dealing with a lot of uh, young people lah. So I think the most memorable experience uh, for me was uh, lepas join Yasam Peneraju, you know, you go into this corporate setting, you don't have as much exposure or interactive opportunities uh, with the younger generation. So for me, I got the opportunity uh, about two years lepas masuk Yasa Peneraju to run this program together with my colleagues from our uh, PSDM team under the grant from Yayasan Hasanah. Uh, so this program dia melahirkan dalam 25 uh, CNC machinists and uh, kita train di uh, Kedah And then at the end of the program, I think about maybe three, four months selepas mereka dah habis program dah masuk employment, kita adakan this one get together lah dekat Penang. We went to escape theme park. Kita minta employers dia orang semua bagi dia orang the day off. Kita bayarkan duit minyak and transfer. Kita prepare all the food. We brought them in. And so it really gave me the opportunity untuk berinteraksi dengan Prima Faedah ni in a very casual setting lah. So agaknya lepas dah lama tak deal dengan budak-budak muda ni, you know, getting to get to know them again really make me feel much oh so I'm, uh, I'm doing something that's benefiting other people walaupun mungkin it's not as direct as teaching them in a classroom sebab mm-hmm. when you duduk dengan dia orang you dengar cerita you know dia orang tolong family simpan duit nak kahwin simpan duit nak beli motor and then you rasa macam you know you're really making a difference and and that's very important to me because it comes back to that single passion that I have on nation building lah And and I think indirectly, obviously, it's just changing lives for the better. So I think that's the most memorable experience uh, that I've had with the Asam Penraju. But sebenarnya kalau nak dikatakan ada banyak, ada banyak uh, memorable experience yang really orang kata uh, will stay in my heart and my soul and my mind for a very long time because Asam Penraju ni kita tak besar. We operate like a family and then our scholars are... Uh, extended family bersama-sama juga dengan friends of Yasam Peneraju, our pledges, our collaborators, our vendors. So we all work for that single um, objective kan untuk propel the talents to greater height. So when you see that success story, uh, no matter how big it is, it makes you feel, you know, like it's 
it's all worth it lah. All of the work that we do, um, is worth it. And and that's that's I think at the end of it really allows you to go back home to sleep well. So the feeling of satisfaction, kan, of being a part of the journey, and also yeah. sometimes the stories that we heard dari orang-orang yang kita dah tolong tu somehow heartwarming lah kepada kita kan macam mana kita dah tolong and then uh, diorang cerita balik uh, kat kita how ASM Praju has helped changing their lives kan Betul, betul. And I think, Anip, I think at the same time kan, sometimes it's not just about like macam what Yasam Peneraju can give or has given these people. Mm-hmm. Pasal tu kalau you dengar cerita-cerita diorang, dia betul-betul membuatkan kita rasa macam, you know, you go back and reflect on and and rasa macam insaf. Adakah aku <laughs> dalam situasi yang sama boleh, you know, go through that similar hardship in such a positive spirit sebab kita pernah pergi ke Sabah interview potential penerima faedah yang rumah tak ada tandas hmm. rumah tak ada electricity adik beradik ramai and ada yang mempunyai masalah keluarga negaraan so you know at 17 they have so many different issues you know so it really makes you feel like you know, what we do is important and so we need to keep keep doing it and do it right lah uh-huh. I think so sebab diorang ni pun um, sebenarnya bukanlah kata diorang ni katakanlah diorang yang receive receive duit uh, receive receive uh, el, apa letter of demand daripada kita ni sebenarnya diorang ni nak nak bayar nak nak try to uh, get back to us tapi uh, ada certain situation yang menyebabkan um, diorang tak boleh ada yang komitmen dengan family ada yang membantu mak dengan bapa ada yang membantu family adik-adik yang lain ada yang unemployment yang still berniaga nak nak pula apa Uh, sebab um, this pandemic issue uh, hmm, lagi lah banyak yang ada banyak ada banyak lah especially ada yang kita punya program-program yang yang tak ada kerja ada yang dibuang kerja so um, from there kita memang ada juga uh, memang kena try to help juga lah in other way instead of you uh, collecting money uh, you actually tahu apa yang terjadi pada diorang selepas diorang withdraw ataupun diorang being terminated daripada Uh, program dekat YP ni. Uh-huh. Betul. Mana ada orang tak nak payahkan. I mean being responsible is one thing lah but mm-hmm. tapi uh, being a, a human being actually takkanlah dia orang tu sengaja tak nak bayar mesti ada uh-huh. reason. That's Betul. where the whole story is behind kan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can come in with that like macam specific uh, you know uh, payment program lah. So you know at the end of the day the scholars hmm. tak perlu takut lah kalau dapat surat daripada Hanim ha, kan. Sebab kita punya Just come and talk to you uh, kan. Kita punya kita punya tu bukannya stringent sangat. You you need to follow betul-betul. Kita you you, you need to get back to us lah if you say, if you say like you you ada problem macam ni ada etc etc problem. You kita boleh discuss lah benda tu. Uh, betul, betul. betul. I mean sebab I, sebenarnya Mm. I rasa macam recovery ni dia penting juga in the sense that okay, kalau you langsung tak bayar dia ada impact dia sebenarnya to the future of the program and future mm. uh, penerima faedah. So macam it will be quite not nice lah kalau you tak langsung bayar and sometimes duit-duit recovery ni also duit penyumbang dana that I work with. So kita uh-huh. orang pun nak explain to our pledges kan kenapa uh-huh. macam ni macam ni ni. So it's very important lah that it, it it works tapi at the same time macam Hanya katakan kita faham mungkin ada sedikit-sedikit atau beberapa kekangan yang menyebabkan scholars mungkin ada some issues on repayment kan so hmm. at the end of it you come and talk to us lah dia asal penaju kita tak makan orang don't worry. <laughs> Alright, thank you Syaz. Hanim, any hmm. last words ataupun final words yang you nak kongsi? Okay, um, final words um, to myself tu, um, betul lah I, I actually um, happy to work with uh, Yasan Peneraju. Honestly speaking, uh, these people um, very fun, very nice. Masa I join pun uh, memang um, banyak orang yang boleh tolong lah even though diorang sendiri pun busy tapi diorang um, akan ada masa sikit lah untuk tolong kita explain this and that. So um, ho- ho- hopefully I, I memang I memang uh, nak stay longer dengan dia Asal Peneraju pun sebab I memang suka kerja dekat sini because I I boleh work independently and at the same time um, walaupun you ada um, Um, management yang you memang kena follow dia punya rules and all tapi you also can um, 
bagi you punya idea and you punya suggestion that um, yang kita yang kita boleh share dengan um, orang-orang lain juga. Um, so itu 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 adalah salah satu privilege yang you boleh dapat dekat Islam Peneraju lah. Um, and then um, other than that harapan um, I also want to thank um, all the um, Uh, pemegang amanah yang actually dah buat repayment yang memang tengah bayar and dah dapat clearance pun daripada kita kalau boleh um, kita still get in touch um, and and also want to thank you for your apa, uh, kind responsibility and also um, se- kepada sesiapa yang um, receive uh, letter of demand ataupun notis pembayaran balik daripada kita uh, janganlah um, diam uh, you need to get back to us within 14 days uh, actually kalau based on the surat pun um, tapi if let's say you ada apa-apa problem you uh, you come back and you tell us um, Um, what is your problem? We can discuss and um, we try to we try to apa manage you punya situation and we try to actually um, accommodate you lah uh, macam mana you kita boleh um, tolong you at the end of the day you boleh bayar and you pun rasa happy uh, dengan apa yang you buat uh, tu je lah oh, yang okay. rasa. Uh. Okay, thanks, Hanif. Just yes, any final words you want to share? Um. Final words ya. Eh? Um, I think kalau nak dikatakan actually ya yeah, sampai Peneraju ni was supposed to be my gap year lah uh, untuk before I I pursued my further education because I wanted to do a uh, doctorate. So it was supposed to be my gap year in terms of uh, uh, obtaining industry experience lah because you dah, you dah bekerja sebagai seorang guru, you are in a classroom. So this is another layer or another dimension of the education sector or the landscape education in Malaysia. Tapi gap yearnya daripada setahun dua dah nak hampir lima tahun. So I think that speaks about <laughs> how how fun and uh, how you know it's not just about fun lah. How how heartwarming macam Ani cakapkan tadi working is and the work that we do. So I I punya hope is that we can we are able to continue the work that we do to help more people uh, and also at the same time as I also said earlier benda ni bukan boleh buat yang siapa raju je bukan kerajaan je it needs support from everybody from industry from GLC GLIC from you no know, our prima faida untuk buat bayarkan recovery and also to the public Everybody needs to work together. So my hopes and wishes is that we are all able to work together uh, to create more opportunities for a public-private partnership and also for, you know, everybody out there to support us, you know, retweet, share our programs, um, share the opportunities, you know. Kalau you adalah penyumbang faedah, penerima faedah yang saya pernah rajuk in the past, uh, wawakan program yang telah mengubah hidup anda kepada rakan-rakan di kampung, rakan-rakan di sekolah. Bagi tahulah seantero sepelusuk Malaysia tentang yasam peneraju. So you know I think that's 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 the 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 um the biggest hope lah that we are able to continue what we do because at the end of the day it is something that is beneficial and impactful. I I sincerely believe that and I am also very very happy lah macam Hanu cakapkan tadi kan kita work as a family and towards that one single objective so it's also very very meaningful. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Shaz and Hanim for your sharing. I agree lah, actually. Tu, begitulah uh, apa kisah di sebalik tabi dan apa Hanim buat recovery, Shazan nak buat surgery engagement, macam mana kita deal pula dengan orang. It's actually di sebalik tabi, di sebalik tabi ada lagi. It's actually how we are working together untuk create opportunities macam Shaz cakap tadi, to create opportunities for other people as well. Okay? Again, thank you so much Shazana and Hanem for this episode, episode 11, hashtag initiative saya. So again, I want to ambil kesempatan ni untuk uh, cakap um, apa tu, semoga semua uh, mangsa-mangsa banjir, semua urusan mereka dipermudahkan insyaAllah. Okay, thank you so much all the viewers for this episode. InsyaAllah kita akan jumpa lagi hari Rabu ni, masa yang sama. Okay? Okay. Uh, thanks again. Shazan Hanim. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam. Okay. Salam.